Welcome to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Be a part of the program today by calling 757-222-3705. That's 757-222-3705. Email your questions and comments to Dave at Let's Talk Cars Radio.com. Now, here is the host of Let's Talk Cars Radio, Dave Palach. Dave Palach. Happy Saturday, America. That's right. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio. I am your host, Dave Pilach, along with Rock and Carry, Rock and Larry Cobb. Yeah, see, I'm trying to do a bunch of things this week, so I'm just going to let you. So, Cameron's actually out, so all of our, all our technical work is uh, actually be trying to conduct it by me at the same time I do the radio show. So it's a learning experience. It is. A, you know how long it's been since I've actually had like work, work like a board and try to talk and everything at the same time? It's, it's been a while. That was our early days. Well, <laughs> it, 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 you'll get it. Quickly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, can't complain. Even if I did, no one would listen. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been kind of interesting. So, yeah, so bear with me, guys, because I'm actually, uh, we're actually on Facebook Live. If you guys don't know, you haven't been paying attention for the last couple weeks and you missed out and you haven't tuned in, we actually do Facebook Live as well. We post the show out there so you guys can watch it anytime you want. We're doing a whole bunch of different stuff. Instagram, you name it. We're, we're trying to do it all. So it's been an interesting learning experience for us. Better to try than not try. Yeah, than not to try. So I'm going to jump right into this this week with some of the news. You guys, uh, you ready for the Super Bowl? Yeah, I've got some chips. <laughs> <laughs> I got some chips. Did you got some dip to go with the chip? I just won't be watching the Super Bowl while I'm eating it, but I have some. So I got all the releases for the different car commercials that are going to come out during the Super Bowl, and I'm not really impressed this year. There's really nothing huge that's actually going to be big. You know, usually we talk about every year. The car commercials come out. They're awesome. We watch it during the Super Bowl. I'm excited. I care less about the Super Bowl. If it doesn't have an engine and tires and stuff, usually I'm just not that impressed. I mean, because I vary. I mean, I have a team I like and I've always liked, and if they're not playing, I usually won't watch, and that's the Bears. So go ahead and send me all your hate mail now because I know it's coming. But, uh, yeah, I am. If it's not engine related, uh, I don't get too excited. Now NASCAR is coming <laughs> back around, so I got something to look forward to. But with the Super Bowl commercials and everything, so I took a look at them. The two ones that I actually thought were kind of interesting is it looks like you're going to have St Steven Tyler, like in his younger years, promoting the Stinger. And I, I told you, the Stinger was huge at, at this year's auto show. Mm -hmm. Everybody talked about it, so he's going to do a commercial with that. And so that was kind of interesting. I saw the clip of it. I got one of the little media kits that sent me the, the release of it, and I watched it. So that's cool. And the other one is going to be, so I don't really know how they're going to do this. And, I mean, I guess you guys are going to probably find out for us. I, I plan on trying to click and take a look at it. Mercedes. Mercedes is giving away a car. You actually go to an app and it brings up the car and you have to keep your finger on the car and whoever the last person is with their finger on the car wins the car. Hmm. Okay. I, I could just see so many things that could go wrong with that. Like, you know, if there's somebody's, you know, phone stalls or something like that, or the connection stalls or whatever it may be, but you know, well, there'll be a winner. I'm sure. There'll be a something. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a something. So basically, you got to keep your finger on the car. And I guess the car moves around on the screen a little bit, so you actually got to follow it with your finger. And the last one standing wins the car is what they're doing. They're going to start at the Super Bowl. It's not going to run just during the Super Bowl. I guess it starts the Super Bowl and the last person. So it could go on forever, I guess. It could. Well, they did something like that in Vegas uh, years ago. They had a uh, – this place is still there, but they moved off the strip. It was called Wet n' Wild. And they had the ride the slide contest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So they took their big, huge slide, and you had to just keep on riding it over and over again. And that went on for weeks. I mean. I couldn't keep that up. They gave them, like, 15-minute, like, I guess, like, breaks, like, every couple hours. But they just had to keep on riding the slide. Go up the stairs, ride down the slide. Go up the stairs, ride down the slide. Now, if there was an elevator to take you up there and not Ooh. go up the stairs, I'd be okay. I could go longer. No, and it was tall. It's a lot of stairs. <laughs> and that was it. And, they, and they, at least, like, one year they gave away, like, cars, a house, a boat. They gave away all different kind of things. It was actually. That's a, a big prize, but that's a lot of work. It was a lot of work. I mean, they had people falling out and medical teams everywhere. I mean, because, I mean, people would push themselves up and over. So. Anyway, so here's the second kind of idea that's a little bit different, stuff like that. So Ford has decided not to run a lot of commercials during the Super Bowl. They're actually going to be the sponsor, I guess, of the Super Bowl, but they're not going to run car ads, I guess is what they're saying during the Super Bowl. They're a sponsor, but they're not going to run spots. Right, correct. So what, what do they get for their money? I don't know. So what they decide to do is they have these F-150s, I guess, out in town, and they're dragging people around from parking lots and bringing them to the game. That's their, that was their advertisement for this year. Hmm. 
And if you take a look at the picture, it's actually online. It looks like a big, huge, like dumpster. They just cut the top off and weld some seats into it. And there's an F-150 dragging it around, taking people from parking lots into the stadium parking lot. And that's, it sounds like they're doing all the work. Well, Ford is. But I mean, and it, but they're paying to be a sponsor of the, uh, of the game? Yeah. I don't know. Well, look, we've talked about it. People are not putting the money into the auto shows anymore. We've mm -hmm. talked about that. The car, a lot of these car companies are bound out from going to the auto show. What's the reason why? Well, it's very simple, people. We've talked about it. If the Internet didn't exist, you, the auto show probably still would. But the fact of the Internet, everything that's new, wild, or exciting is leaked out on the Internet before it ever gets the auto show. So you've already heard about it. You've already seen it. You've, you know, so there is no big wow at the auto shows anymore because yeah, you've already heard about it. All. Nothing new. And that's the biggest reason why auto manufacturers are actually pulling out from a lot of the auto shows and not spending the big money that they used to. I mean, if you ever went to like a Detroit auto show back in the day, like say 80s or so, even early 90s, because I went to a, two different ones, it was like a big to-do. I mean, you know, you had fire on stage and sparklers and you know what I mean? You name it, they did like big to-dos at car shows. It was a show. It was a show. It was a show. It was like going to like a Broadway, I guess just typed, I don't know, I wouldn't say Broadway, but you know what I mean? It was a show. It was a premiere. Mm -hmm. Now it's just like, eh, here's our car. And we put it on a little turny thing for you. <laughs> you know, it's kind of what it's coming down to. I mean, and that just doesn't interest people. Like people get all their information off the internet. I mean, people aren't even going to car dealership anymore. They buy their car on the internet. So the change is among us. I yep. guess is the best way to put it. So yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. I was just like, that's not to put any car commercials in there. Maybe they, I don't. Know, maybe they will. They say they're not going to, and I, I believe them. But I'm just wondering what they're getting for their money. Well, they're their official sponsor. So you know it's going to be like, this Super Bowl brought to you by Ford. You know what I mean? <laughs> no different. That's I mean, a that, lot of money to spend just for yeah, that. Yeah, but you know what? That's huge. You know that's huge. Even in radio, that's huge. When you connect a sponsor to some type of show or program, stuff like that, it's huge. It has its clout. So That's true, but you expect a lot. For a lot of money, you expect a lot For the back. Super Bowl, because yeah. the Super Bowl is a lot of money to be involved with that. That is true. You know. But their numbers are declining. I mean, how are they going to keep those rates up so high? I don't know. Maybe they'll decide to start putting all their advertising on all the drones and flying cars flying over the stadium coming to go and watch the game. I'm, the waiting, to see, I'm waiting to see a drone with a flag behind it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with a little flying flag <laughs> behind it. Uh, I, you know what? Stranger things to happen, my friend. Stranger things to happen. Uh-oh. I hear it now. I told you. Send your hate mail. It's coming. I was just checking my texts, too, and stuff. I see people starting to comment on it. Here's the thing. The industry, guys, everything is changing. It isn't what it used to be. Things are going to change over and over and over again. You know, there's some things in the news this week about how, you know, car sales have you know been affected by a lot of the different changes within just the last couple of months. So as everything changes and everything kind of, you know, moves around, it's just one of those things. you got to get used and adapt to the fact that things are not going to stay the same. There's not. I don't know. Oh, I could talk about it forever, but I'm not going to. So here's something on Ford, too. You know, my, for my manufacturer challenged friends, that's my new coin phrase. <laughs> manufacturer challenged friends. friends. Okay. Yep. So apparently, Ford, the family that is, is actually looking for a missing punch bowl. Have you heard this story? No. They have, there's a punch bowl, I guess, that was awarded years ago as a prize, and it's cut crystal glass, and the Ford family's been looking for it for a while. They actually want this, this crystal bowl back that just somehow got out of their hands. So they have actually put a statement out this week to everybody, and everybody who's listening to us, obviously we're talking about it, to look in your attics, look in your cupboards, look out in the garage, look everywhere, just to see if maybe this punch bowl exists in your family. Maybe you had it forever in your family and didn't realize what it was, but they're looking for it. They posted a picture of it, but it's a, actually an award that was given at some point in time. Well, how would how would you know it was the original bowl? Is some kind of marking yeah, on it? Or? There's, there's, they give you some, there's some insight and some information online about it. They showed a picture. That's the media thing I got. They showed me a, a it's a picture and it's got like little glasses that go with it and stuff like that. So is there a, a reward? <laughs> I'm sure there probably is. I mean, I'm sure if you have it and isn't you know grandma passed it down to you and now it's sitting out in the garage, you know, holding up a gas can. <laughs> 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 what a place for a cut crystal bowl. Yeah, right. Hey, don't tell me you haven't gone out the garage. and There's, yeah. there's things in your garage that don't belong in your garage, I'm that, sure. That is true, and I don't know how they got there. Yeah, there's things in my garage that don't belong there. They mystify me every time. I'm like, that's where that went. <laughs> well, with me, it's where – how did that get here? He set it down while you are getting something from? out of the freezer. <laughs> Left it there. It's been there this whole time. But, uh, yeah, so – uh, 
hey, if you got a punch bowl and you don't know where it came from, you might be the lucky guy that has an expensive punch bowl that belongs to Ford. <laughs> I, I thought it was a, it was interesting. Hey, so I have a listener's letter. I've been corrected once again. <laughs> a listener's letter uh, that I'm gonna jump into. Dear Dave, I have a 2013 Nissan Altima. I've started to notice that my brake light comes and goes sometimes, or sometimes I don't see it for days. Most of the time, I just catch it out of the corner of my eye, but before I can look down, it's already gone. Any ideas, a working mom from Virginia Beach? I have a bunch of ideas. Any ideas? No? no. You're, you're staring I, at me with the I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm useless <laughs> on that. I would say that you could be low on brake fluid. Uh, if you have brink sensors on that car, and I don't know if the 2013 does it, maybe it does. Um, you could have one of the sensors wearing down. It's making the brake light come on every once in a while and stuff like that. My biggest suggestion is if you're not going to work on it yourself, uh, take it into one of your local repair shops and have them take a look at it. There's a bunch of different things. I don't think if it isn't the ABS light stuff, if that's what you're talking about, that's a whole nother thing. But, um, hopefully you're just talking about just the brake light itself. Uh, get it down to one of your local auto garages. If you have somebody that you trust, let them take a look at it. Let them see exactly what's going on with it. Uh, if you don't have somebody to trust, as I always say, now's the time to meet a new friend. Find a local shop that you think you can trust, build a relationship, and start taking your car to them regularly. That's the most important thing I try to tell everybody. Build a relationship with the auto garage. It's the best thing you can do. That's Agreed. Very, very, very smart idea. So I'm actually sitting here trying to talk, and I'm trying to run these cameras at the same time. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> it has been very a very interesting little uh, thing here for me. Because like I said, you know, I'm used to somebody doing it. So trying to sit there and actually set it up and make it all work has been uh, an interesting experience for us. It's always easier for somebody to do all the other stuff. No, like, it, it that is. way you can focus on what you're doing, which is the show. Oh, so here's a question that got posed this week, and actually it's been showing up in the media a little bit. Cadillac, does anybody think they're going to come or go? Are they going to stay? What's it going to be? Appear apparently Cadillac is starting to fade. Uh, it's, I think it's, what's happening to Cadillac is the exact same thing that happened to Pontiac. I wow. think that eventually the GM is going to go gonna the way of Oldsmobile, huh? Yeah, I think. Yeah, exactly. You I think, think so? As long as that brand's been around? Well, here's the thing. So people aren't buying Cadillacs like they used to. It's a proven fact. Cadillac sales have diminished, unfortunately. Um, the only thing that really keeps Cadillac up and going right this second is the Escalade. That's really, that's the biggest purchaser. Everybody buys the Escalade. But now with the new Navigator showing up, and we talked about that a couple weeks ago, Navigator had planned to give Cadillac a run for their money, and it actually is starting to work to the point where, you know, GM went ahead, remember, and said, if you trade in a certain model, we'll give you a huge cash back, you know what I mean, towards a new Escalade. Yeah. So... I like those Escalades. Always have. They they are, but you, you remember when everybody was riding around in Cadillac cars and everything. I that do. was that was the huge thing. I was, like them too. And you don't see it like you don't see them like you used to. No, you don't. I mean, they're here and there. I mean, I might I, seriously, and I start thinking about this because this article came out, and I actually got it in the our little media thing like Wednesday, and I so I read it, and I was just like, oh, that's something interesting to talk about. And then as I drove around for the next couple of days, I realized I don't see a lot of Cadillacs driving around. No, you don't. You know, I love the old Cadillacs. I've always I want an old Cadillac as a cruiser. I just want I would like an old Cadillac convertible just to cruise around on Sundays. I just think it'd be a cool car to have. And I know my friends would be like, well, what'd you get that for? But, you know, I, I just think it'd be a cool car, just a Sunday car. Well, they ride so nice. They do. My dad went through Cadillac stage for a while. He, he did the Cadillac thing. If I had the money, I'd have one. <laughs> well, you can, <laughs> have, you can have one. We can make it happen for you. We'll get you an old one. <laughs> no yeah <laughs> now I, I see them. every time i see one or i pass one in traffic i get that urge again i'm like ooh, yeah i like to have one of those but then reality sets in and then i realize that uh you know I've got kids and stuff like that and probably shouldn't have an old cadillac just sitting around just a passing passing dream mm, yeah <laughs> well, for now anyway <laughs> for now i tell you what y'all we're gonna take a commercial break when we come back we're gonna jump into it stay with me i got a little things on the, the new system where they're doing a lot of video feeds inside cars. We're also going to talk about a little bit immigration and how immigration and cars connect together. Uh, you don't want to miss this. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio with Dave Palach here on Freedom 1110 WKQA. Your vehicle has let you down and you need to get it moved pronto. Who do you call? Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth. Whether it's a breakdown or auto accident, Quality Towing and Recovery will be there quickly to solve your problem and with courteous service and reasonable rates. When you're stuck, don't worry about it. 
Call Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth, 237-5050. That's Quality Towing and Recovery, 237-5050. If you have never tried a cup of Uncle Pete's Gourmet Coffee, you're in for a pleasant surprise. Norfolk Coffee and Tea has created a custom blend of Colombian and Guatemalan beans. The flavor is bold and delicious with none of that bitter aftertaste. Norfolk Coffee and Tea roasts and blends their coffee daily so you have great flavor and freshness in every cup. With every bag of Uncle Pete's Coffee sold, the proceeds go to the Peter Decker Children's Charities. They include St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Champions for Children, St. Mary's Home for Disabled Children, The Up Center, CHKD, Urban Discovery Ministries, and many more. Come by and say hello to Chris and Nick Stephanesis. Browse their selection of custom blended coffee, package, and loose tea and cake cup offerings. Norfolk Coffee and Tea, beans in the jeans since 1918. Visit their newest location in the Norfolk Waterside District. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Call into the program now at 757-222-3705. Now, here is Dave Palach. Welcome back, America. That's right. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio. I'm your host, Dave Pilach, hanging out with Larry Cobb. And actually, Cameron is out at a funeral today. So we are trying to do all the buttons myself. <laughs> I'm sure he'd rather be here. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sure. But I'm, I'm trying to fix it all. Um, it's one of those things. I'm trying to get in, in there and keep up with it and, and keep the show going at the same time. Are you making it work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looks looks good from where I'm sitting. Can't see it from my house. <laughs> So before we went to commercial break, I was talking to you guys about a little different things that were coming up and stuff. So have you heard of the Owl? It is a uh, basically it's you know a camera system for your car. Mm. It's, it's, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't say that I'm, I'm so familiar with it. I told you years and years and years ago when I was overseas, everybody had cameras in their cars, and it wasn't big here yet, but it was big there. Now it's becoming bigger here. So there's a system called the Owl that they've been pushing. It's actually a pretty cool little thing. So it records outside the car and inside the car at the same time. And you don't have to touch a button to make it turn on. It just turns on itself. It's hooked into your uh, ODB. And uh, it, it, everything's all set up and wired in. So it just, it just activates. But one of the cool things is, is it actually records when you're out of the car too. So if somebody bumps a car or something like that, it actually sends you an alert and different things. So I like that. That sounds yeah. neat. So it's kind of kind of cool little thing that's out there and stuff like that. If you guys want to check it out, uh, they sent us over the the video feed, and, and you know I don't usually talk about a lot of products that we see in, but actually it was kind of cool. So just uh, look it up. It's called the Owl, and, and watch the little video of it. It's kind of it's cheap too. It's only like three forty nine or something like that. So it's not very expensive for feed. I, I'm actually thinking about putting probably it in high there. def video too. Is it not? Yeah, yeah, it's high definition. So it's kind of cool little setup and stuff. I mean, you know, listen, there's different things that come out that I always think that's you know very interesting. So it's one of those things that we uh, would talk about. I kind of think it's funny all the time. Time, we talk about different stuff that's you know out there new products and new technology and everything comes along so here's one of those things where people connect communicating with their cars okay so if a car is ro rolling down the road it's going to communicate with you without you even realizing so GM actually patented this week uh, some technology that's actually pretty cool that it goes into a lot of different stuff and basically what it is is it's set up where you can actually oh somebody's actually calling it so let me grab that they if you have a car that is the new advanced cars are going to be coming out in the future anybody who has a cell phone it can ping off of that cell phone as they're walking down the sidewalk mm. so we, now we talked about this and i said what's the big push out there for all this communication remember they want everything to talk to everything i told you there's been a big push for this for the last couple of years mm -hmm. so now if a car is going down the road if you have a cell phone in your pocket somehow it'll be able to ping off of that does that make sense to you yep it does so and then of course it was brought up to me it was like what if you don't have a cell phone well the reason why they're doing this is is all the different 
tracking systems in the car for all these autonomous driving vehicles, autonomous, self-driving, cars that drive themselves, the car without a driver to, to get them all. You mastered okay, the list. Right, I'll make sure I got it. I might have one of those to write them all down. <laughs> but if it's going down the road, it's looking at every single street sign. It's looking at the road. It's looking at the curvature of the road. It's communicating with other cars driving around it. The last thing is, is how to track people you can't see. So if somebody's blocked behind a larger vehicle or behind a building and it tries to anticipate that he's going to step out this, off the sidewalk in front of the car, how to do that. And the technology they're trying to work on now is to have that car ping off of any cell phone that's anywhere nearby. So that represents basically a person in movement. So the car can anticipate if they think that person is going to step off the sidewalk in front of it. This all sounds like artificial intelligence, does it not? No, but it is to a certain but, degree. Yeah. I mean, so. It's, it's the, the thinking smart devices. Well, that answers a question that we asked, like I said, a couple of years ago. Why are they in such a push for everything to talk to everything? And that's the reason why. So everything can be interconnected. The only way to be able to have this type of type this type of technology and be able to have a car go ahead and drive itself is it needs to be able to talk to anything that it can talk to to figure out what's out there and what's moving and what's not, including people. Yep. So I thought that was kind of cool. Got somebody on the phone. Oh, man, Fred. What's going on, buddy? Uh, how you doing today? Yeah, good show today. Good show. Good, good. I'm glad. Uh, you were talking about the car shows and so forth, and I got a little nostalgia for you. Detroit, Michigan, 1965 car show at Cobo Hall. Okay. I was there. And uh, Bobby Rydell was the uh, was the special guest. He was singing there and so forth. And I was driving, uh, this brings back some good memories, a brand new, just in 65, I was driving a brand new 66 Mustang. Uh, cherry red, not, what was it? Candy, candy apple red. That was what it was, yeah. So a little nostalgia for what you were saying a while ago about the uh, the show in Detroit. Mm -hmm. It's It's funny how a lot of stuff has changed, you know. I have over and over and over again went and took a look at all the different car shows. The past there's a lot of videos or stuff, and I literally can look at the videos that people post right. and watch the change over the years in the video and how it's been less yes. of a production, less of a production, less of a production as things uh, go on. So it's kind of right. interesting. You're correct. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's sad because I think that's one of the things I know I look forward to them, but I also understand yeah. progression. There's no way to stop that. So you know. they have a car show downtown Newport News on Washington Avenue. 1955, wow. and they had every 1955 brand new car uh, at every block on Washington Avenue, and they had uh, Johnny Cash and the uh, those sisters, uh, Mother Maybell and the Carter sisters. They were playing on one of the flatbed boards. Uh, interesting times back then. We need, I think we need to get back to some of that. <laughs> I'd like to see. I'd like to see pictures of that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, that, that was great. I, mean, I was 17. Uh, things have uh, changed yeah. big time. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I appreciate yeah. the call, buddy. Thank you very much. I, I, okay. I love hearing about some of the old stuff. It just takes me back a little bit, so I think it's awesome. <laughs> okay, good show. Thank you, sir. Right. So it just goes to tell you, man, people realize that the change is out there. It's I was two then, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't remember. Well, here's something that I've been excited about, and you're going to know exactly what it is. So remember how I told you that they're coming back out with station wagons, and I have joked and been excited about it for a while, mm -hmm. for one reason and one reason only. Why? Well, I have no idea. You remember, I talk, I told you about this. You know, your memory is as good as mine is. <laughs> it's like a sieve. The family <laughs> truckster. Yes. Okay. And I, I joke about it. I've joked about it over and over again. I want them to build a family truckster. I want Buick to go ahead and build me one, and then I'll put my family in it, and I'll spend the summer going across country in it because I just think it'd be fun, and we can broadcast live from it. So I joke about it all the time. And so I've been excited at the fact that Buick has been bringing back the station wagon for that reason and that reason only. <laughs> but here's the thing. You know, the, the talk's out this week. You know, everybody's seen, you know, the, the tour in addition. It's the Regal Tour X, I think is what it's called. And it's I, I think it's cool, man. I don't know. I, call me goofy. Maybe just for that one reason, just to be able to <laughs> have the truckster go across <laughs> country in it. But, you know, they're talking about, is this now going to be, you know, is it going to beat out the crossover? Are they going to start bringing station wagons back? And I, you know, like I said, we've joked about it forever. And I don't know. I, it's a cool looking car. They're going to have to add a lot of whiz bang to it, I think, to make it. Well, right. You put compete. 18 headlights in it, you know, paint it green, <laughs> put some wood paneling on it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the wood paneling. I'm telling you, if they build me one, I will put my family in it and we'll go cross country. In it. Didn't they used to make a car that actually had real wood on it? It won't. Yes, it yeah. was the what Woody. Was, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I thought they did because I know that in, in the '60s they had all those with the decals that looked like. Wood. I've seen people do it to newer models. They just you know 
basically touched on the idea of it and redone it. I just never thought wood and cars went together. They just, they didn't, you know, it's like water and well, they oil. Were, cars were made out of wood originally. Yeah. They you know, some of the old carriage cars. Well, mm-hmm. that's going way back there. You even call those cars? Yes, they are. <laughs> they are. They're a car. They're made out of wood. Car or carriage? Both. <laughs> One and the same, my friend. One and the same. So, okay. So here's something else. I got another letter that come in. Uh, a listener letter. <laughs> hey, Dave. What do you think about online parts ordering? I'm not talking about Craigslist and or eBay, Corey and Norfolk. Now, we've touched on this on many different ways. I think we talked more about Craigslist. We've talked, talked about eBay. But as far as online part ordering, uh, I go back and forth with it. And here's the biggest reason why. And you guys have heard me say it over and over again. You don't know really what you're getting in, until you get it. That's my only problem with it. Things can look great online. And even, you know, and I understand there's, don't get me wrong, there's some established parts suppliers that are out there online that are good parts suppliers. I mean, they got big names, they got legitimate parts and all that kind of stuff. Here is my only problem with online ordering, even if you understand all the risk and everything else, because there's some risk to it. Not that there's a whole lot anymore because it's becoming, you know, huge now. But if you are not 100% a car guy, Let's say you're 80% a car guy, not 100%. You can still make mistakes. So now the part comes in wrong because I can tell you right now. And if you say this has never happened to you, I'm going to call you a big fat liar (laughs) because I have all that never happens. I hear all that never happens. I grew up in the business. I worked in the business forever and I ordered parts wrong all the time. It just happens. There's, There's no way to get around it. It just happens. So if I'm in the business working and getting paid to do it, and I can order a part in wrong. The chances that you, who are not in the business, who's fixing your car in your driveway, or whatever it may be, will order the part in wrong too. That can happen to you too. But now the difference is, is locally, you can just go back down, turn the part in, and get the right part. You order it online, your weekend project has now come to a halt unless you go and now buy it here locally, yeah. right? Well, now you got to ship it back and wait for them to ship, ship it a back replacement. And you thought you ordered the right thing. Now you got to figure out what it is that was different from what you ordered versus what came. Was it something you made a mistake? You know, So you have all those trial and tribulation that go along with that. So that's my only concern about ordering online because a lot of times, like me, I do a lot of my projects on the weekend or – you know, I try to fit them in where I can. So if I order the part in online and I got the part wrong, and a lot of times you open it up and it looks right, you're like, oh, that's cool. And you set it in the corner and you wait for the weekend to come to work on your car, right? Mm-hmm. Now you go ahead and you got the car all set up, you go to work on it, you pull the part off, you put the part, and it looks almost exactly, but just there's one thing that's different. Now you're stuck. Either you're buying it locally or you're going to now put that thing all back together <laughs> so you can drive it to work the next yeah. week and wait for the part to come back. So that would be my only concern on the online part. I'm not saying that they're not good parts. I'm not saying you can't find good deals because a lot of people, the reason why you're buying parts online is because you're looking for a good deal. I'll have you know many, many times, and you know what? I've been proven wrong on this. I used to always think, oh, you know, I, you know, I could find a better deal online. I could find a better deal online and just went right online, ordered the part, and didn't give it any thought. And then come to find out I could have bought the part here locally from a local auto parts supplier and probably got a better deal. And yep. if I had any problems with it, they are right there. Yep, just run down the street and take it back. The only difference was is I didn't do my due diligence completely and look into it first. That was it. So I'm guilty of it. So I, I kind of hope that answers the question because, you know, it's just one of those things. You just, you know, I can understand trying to save a couple bucks. Trust me, I'm a penny pincher, but sometimes it's just not worth the hassle. So if you know exactly what you're going after and you know you're not going to have any issues and that's exactly what it is, sure, okay, I guess online works. I'm one of those guys, if I ever have a problem with something, I'd rather be able to look somebody in the face, tell them what my problem is, and solve it right then and there versus trying to do it through the mail. That's the only difference. Indeed. So on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I got the immigration story for you. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio with Dave Palach here on Freedom 1110 WKQA. Your vehicle has let you down and you need to get it moved pronto. Who do you call? Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth. Whether it's a breakdown or auto accident, Quality Towing and Recovery will be there quickly to solve your problem and with courteous service and reasonable rates. When you're stuck, don't worry about it. Call Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth, 237-5050. That's Quality Towing and Recovery, 237-5050. Do you need money? Do you have a life insurance policy you don't need anymore? If you're Medicare age or older and have a life insurance policy of $100,000 or more, you have the right to sell it 
for cash or long-term care benefits, regardless of your health. A life insurance plan may have been a great decision for you years ago, but now you may not need it. So learn for free how you can turn a $100,000 plus life insurance policy into immediate cash and stop the expensive payments. If you're 65 or older and have a 100K plus life insurance policy that you don't want, Call now to see if you qualify to sell it for cash or other benefits. Don't wait. Pick up your phone and call right now. 800-253-2081. 800-253-2081. Call right now. Our representatives are standing by to assist you. Again, that's 800-253-2081. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Call into the program now at 757-222-3705. Now, here is Dave Palach. Welcome back, America. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio. I'm your host, Dave Pilach, and if you were with us in the first two segments, you heard us talk about all the different crazy stuff and technology that's changing. But I have a story for you that I think is going to kind of rise up little things and get people to start, you know, basically talking and get into things. So, you remember when I was talking to you about license plate readers? Mm-hmm. That was last week. It was. Okay. And remember how I said every time I talk about something, it seems like something else happens that inducts more stories to go along with that? Something else must have happened. It did. <laughs> okay. So, exactly what I thought was going to happen. So, we were talking last week, if you guys didn't catch the show, and we were having a conversation about the license plate readers so they're starting to put license plate readers on a lot of different police cars and they're just going to randomly scan license plates as they drive around but my concern with that was now it's a way to kind of track you and track your movements if it's constantly scanning license plates and you go to x y and z regularly then it can actually create a pattern of every place you go right Mm -hmm. well it looks like immigration has thought this is a good idea it, you know, and, and exactly what I said. I said, you know, there's got to be a reason why the government is getting so into some of this technology and has such an interest in some of this technology. There has to be a push. You know, the government's big into the autonomous vehicles and vehicles talking to other vehicles and tracking people's movements as they walk down the sidewalk. You know, there's a big interest in that. And I have always said behind the scenes that I think the interest is, is for maybe some of the wrong reasons. So my question is, is, is this a wrong reason? So basically they want to scan license plates and they can start tracking uh, illegal Im- immigrants. I mean, basically through license plates and stuff. Well, I, I don't know how that would work. I mean, it's uh, if you're an illegal immigrant, you're not even supposed to have a driver's license, technically, yeah, but unless if you're, you're in California. Yeah, but if you're attached to cars and they start tracking cars and their movements and where they move, it works out they can start tracking people where people are going and where they're at. They start cross-referencing Cross- names. Cross-referencing okay. names and everything else like that, correct. So, in favor, not in favor, what do you, what do you think? That's a toughie. I don't really know that I have an opinion on that yet. I mean, I, I, part of it I like, but I don't like, I don't think anybody, It's you're giving them some privacy. I don't think anybody likes giving that up. And I think, and that was what I was afraid of. I have no problem for trying to make things safe, okay? So, you know, as far as using the technology and they're developing autonomous vehicles and they want everything to talk and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so for the right reasons, I was okay with it. You know me, I'm the technology. I was always the guy that's been in favor. For the last couple of years, as techn- yep. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is great. You know what I mean? I think this is neat. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> now I'm like, I find myself pumping the brakes more than normal where I'm just like, oh, I can see where that could go totally wrong. Yeah. You're not developing that for the car industry. You're developing that for other hidden reasons. You're going to say it's for the car industry. Yeah, we don't know what all those reasons are. Right. So I pose a question to you guys. What do you guys think? I'm curious to hear from you guys. You guys know how to get a hold of us, send an email, text, call and show, whatever it is. I'm just really curious what you think about the technology being developed and using it for the wrong reasons. Because I very much believe that that's what this is going to be used for. I mean, I very much believe that they're going to use a lot of this technology that they were developing for automated cars for the wrong reason. Here's the perfect example of that. If you're going to start scanning license plates and you say it's, well, we want to, you know, Make sure that there's no criminal activity and stuff like that. I don't think that's it. I really think that you're going to start scanning them so you can start tracking everybody's movements. And with this new development being put out there, it kind of legitimizes that as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, we just talked about it a week ago, <laughs> one week ago. Yeah. And now here we are talking about it this week about, oh, well, immigration is going to start. They're looking at the idea. They like it. They think it's great. Well, I don't know how I feel about that one. Uh, 
when I first heard about it, I had no problem because of what they, you know, it's it's limited use of the data. But if it's going to get swapped around and handed over to this one and that one, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see where this well, goes. Then people will make the argument, well, if you're if you're being legal and not breaking the law, you've got nothing to worry about. But I'm I think just, you do. Yeah, I'm just curious what people think. That's what I'm curious what people totally completely think about this. And I'm sure that I'll get uh, things that will come into me that I can actually review after, you know, like I told you, everything I, I put stories out there and before you know it, I get all the different texts and emails and stuff about it and stuff. But I just find it very funny that, you know, we have all this technology that's out there and it says it's being developed for X, Y, and Z. And it's, I think it's really being developed for A, B, and C. So that's just my personal opinion. So here's another one that's out there. There's something for you guys to chew on a little bit. If you guys have been following and people have asked me about it, so Honda has been trying to find a way to get back kind of into the sports car game. So, you know, with the NSX and they wanted to go ahead and do a baby NSX, there was a bunch of different things that were out there about it. So they're actually going to kill those programs for the people that send me some uh, texts on that the last couple of different things we talked about over the last weeks. You know, we talked about a lot of different manufacturers looking for different ways to get in. Uh, it looks like they're going to kill some of these programs. So I'll keep you guys advised as a lot of these in development programs where you guys saw, you know, test models of cars and stuff and everybody keeps on asking me, hey, we saw this, we talked about this and it never came back around. The reason why is when there doesn't show any interest, people decide they're not going to develop them. I got a call. What's going on, Chesapeake? Hey, Dave. Great show. Um, before I get to what I was going to, what I'm calling about, I'll just tell you, uh, if that lady you know, that had the uh, brake light problem, yes, sir. she has a handbrake. Yes, okay, sir. I, I got a car failed because the the guy said, oh, your, your brake light's not coming on. And it's like, hey, it was on when I came in here, and when I left, sure enough, it was still coming on. So they can kind of be squirrely, the little switch that's in the handbrake that activates the, yeah, absolutely you know, right. the, the emergency brake. And and if that, you know, I mean, even if the handle's just not down all the way or it bounces around, you know, it could come on intermittently like she was experiencing. So just one more thing to look at. The issue of, you know, the, the uh, police cars driving around, you know, basically documenting every place that y your vehicle shows up. But one of my problems is, you know, well, who knows who was driving the car that day? So it's like if they want to build, a, you know, a record of, of you, you know, it's kind of irrelevant if somebody else is borrowing your car different times. But the issue is that there have been different states that have put in, uh, you know, uh, put into law that, they can only keep the records for so long. And and there's been other states where they say, well, look, hey, we can actually sell the information if we want to. So I understand your concerns, and, I, and I'm completely, you know, in line with what you're thinking that, hey, there's just too much that, that can be abused here, uh, you know. And so why is it that there's this big push? The other issue is that, all too often, government brings us problems, and they say, ooh, big problem. And the thing is that it's a big problem that they help create, basically, because they have an issue that, hey, here's what we'd like to do, and the only way we can get people to accept it is if we make a problem that goes with it scary enough, and this is going to be the solution. But the solution, it's called the Hegelian dialectic for anybody out there who's, <laughs> who understands it. But, I mean, it's basically problem or reaction solution. We create a problem, we offer you the solution, but it's never going to be to solve the actual problem. So, I'll tell you, you know, what the real problem is. I don't like my cars, my politics combined. Right. <laughs> That's where the real problem is. <laughs> and here's the thing. You know, you've heard yeah. me say, and I don't talk in politics a lot because I just it's not my favorite topic, but I do t you know, coin in a little bit every once in a while on it. The reality of it is, is one hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing most of the time. So when decisions are made for the right reason, the other hand is is doing things for the wrong reason. So yeah. you know, well, I mean, I mean, we know that falls wanted, in government. Yeah. And, and I know, and I understand that you know, if we wanted to get into a big political thing, let's talk about cafe standards, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but but I mean, seriously, the, you know, the, the, this is a situation where if we want to get if. Say I'm a politician and I want to forward this agenda where, you know, I want baby basically to be able to track more people and, well, let's, let's put it in a way that is more acceptable to people. Well, we're only doing it to, to try and keep track of the illegal aliens. And then people say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Let's, let's, you know, keep track of them so they don't overstay visas. And, sure. and, they, and when you're out of those people to start tracking, right. then what do you do with the system? 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what it comes down to. And that's my fear. You know what I mean? I have, right. I have touched on this sub subject over and over again over the years that license plate tracking and starting to make basically a roadmap of where cars go is, I don't think is a very good idea because I but, believe it's going to be reused for all the wrong reasons. And, and here's one of those things that, that a lot of people don't think about. Start talking about all of the places that have easy pass only so that basically you can't go through, you know, a, a toll place anonymously by, you know, throwing a couple coins in anymore. Yeah, absolutely. You, right. you are being tracked just by driving different places, even around this area now. Yep. Like. And then we haven't so, seen the end of that either, so. Right, right. Yep. Well, <laughs> so I, anyway, love the. Love the show, and I, I hope you get Cameron back there to, to free up the other hand. There you go. I appreciate it, sir, and thank you for the telephone call. Okay, thanks. Take it Bye. easy. So, yeah, it just goes to show you, I mean, people understand the idea of it. I mean, so the idea is great. It is. It's a great idea, but at the end of the day, is it going to be used for the right reasons? I don't think so. I well, really don't. I guess the governments are really big on revenue generating, and they could, and Steve's right, they could be selling that stuff. They could. Here's so here's another one. <laughs> wow. Hey, we're touching on government. I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. So <laughs> Minneapolis has decided this is I understand the process of this. I do. I'm gonna start by saying I completely understand how this got to be. You no longer can park more than two cars in your driveway in Minneapolis. They're finding people now. And hmm. it's not just an HOA. This is the this is a city ordinance now. So no longer parking cars on the grass. If you have a driveway, you park two cars in your driveway, and that's it. And what's the reasoning behind that? What do you think the reasoning is behind it? Have you ever drove around Aesthetics? here? People drive, they park seven cars on their lawn and two in the yard and six are up on blocks. And I mean, well, there's already it, ordinances for repairing you know cars in your front yard and whatnot. Yeah, but it? nobody follows them. And, you know, the best the city can do to you know, implement it. I mean, in Virginia Beach, there's nothing to keep you from parking your car on the lawn. I mean, other than the fact that it looks gaudy as can be and stupid. I mean, I hate when people, oh, God, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. I can't stand it. You got a driveway? Park cars in the driveway. If you have more cars and you have driveway space, expand the driveway. Plus, it ruins the lawn. <laughs> Plus, it looks tacky. <laughs> yeah. So, I can understand. that's how I understand. I'm sure that's how this got started. But now they're not playing around. They're like, look. So, what it basically came down is, I guess there was a family. They have seven people that live. The adult kids have now moved back in the house. So there are seven kids that live in the house. They have, what, five cars out of seven people. So, they went ahead and pulled their cars up into the driveway and they got fined for it or something. So they decided to move the cars and park cars on the street. So they left two cars in the driveway, put the rest of the cars, the other three cars out on the street, okay? Okay. Which is legal to do. That's fine. Well, snowstorm came, so they decided they didn't want to leave their cars out in the street during the snowstorm, so they pulled the cars off the street, put them in the driveway for the snowstorm, and they got fined again. So, but they have five cars to, you know, one house, I think it should be based on the length of the driveway. You could build a driveway if you had enough land. It maybe it would accommodate three or four cars. Look, as long as I'm here's my thing about it, and I have complained about this forever. You've heard me complain about it. I think it is one hundred percent. I don't. I don't like cars on lawns, and I don't like them all over the place. I have no problem if you want to extend your driveway and do it concrete. I'm not talking about throw some down some gravel and call it a driveway, but actually make a driveway and it holds all your cars. Okay, fine. It holds all your cars. I'm okay with that. Don't park them all over the lawn and then just pretend that's okay. Because what about the guy next to you that takes pride in his house and now he's got to look at cars parked all over the lawn? Nobody, well, I, nobody wants to see that. I agree with that. I, I get that. You know, and I, I've had this argument. This has gone on and on. We did a whole week of argument on this about a year back. I got into this debate with people and, you know, people should mind their own business. And what I do in my own yard is not, that's not true. It's not. Because it affects the people around right. you. It does affect, they're like, it doesn't affect you. It does. It affects my property value, affects everything else. No different than parking that big, huge school bus across the street from my house. Yeah. That, nobody wants to stare at a big, huge school bus. They just don't. And, you know, and I understand there's reasons for that too. And we've gone, we've had a whole show about that too. But I can understand how this law in Minneapolis came about. And it came about with people, it takes one guy, one guy to take to do something above and beyond and make it crazy. Before you know it, somebody's looking to pass a law. You know, every law has somebody's name attached to it. You've heard me say that before. Oh, yeah. And so, that's true. It is. <sighs> Somebody thought it up. <laughs> <laughs> they did. So I got something else for you. So we talked about CES show came and went, SEMA show came and went, auto show came and went. So they're all, you know, everything's gone. And you got some other auto shows coming up. But the big, the, the big huge ones that everybody talks about is, you know, it's kind of come and gone. Some of the things that came out there are some of the new adaptive things to cars that are actually out there. Um, there's a bunch of different 
systems that are out there now that are being they, they're already invented but now they're being put into cars there's only a couple of them that i was excited about the two ones that i'm actually interested in seeing to get developed is tire monitoring and not just the air pressure now they actually have sensors built into the liner of the tires which actually can tell you the pressure in the tire as it goes up and down it also tell you how hot the tire is getting or how cool the tire is running if when you're steering around corners if you're using more of the outside wall of the tire because of the pressure and it can adjust those pressures automatically for you now that way you get better maximization out of your tires and it actually can tell you tread depth so it'll actually tell you how quickly the tires wear and not by the way that you drive you drive too aggressively you tend to wear tires out it actually give you all that information i like that yeah, that was that was pretty cool now the other one that came out there that was out there is the advancement in headlights now we gave a host show a little while back that was based on headlights and the fact that headlights had never changed. So I tell you what, I'm gonna take a quick commercial break, break and when I come back, I'll actually tell you what the difference is in headlights and we will talk to you soon. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio with Dave Palach here on Freedom 1110 WKQA. Your vehicle has let you down and you need to get it moved pronto. Who do you call? Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth. Whether it's a breakdown or auto accident, Quality Towing and Recovery will be there quickly to solve your problem and with courteous service and reasonable rates. When you're stuck, don't worry about it. Call Quality Towing and Recovery in Portsmouth, 237-5050. That's Quality Towing and Recovery, 237-5050. Hello and welcome back to the Ronnie Deutsch Tax Program. On the line is Paul from California. Hi, Paul. What's your tax problem today? Hi, Ronnie. Love your show. Listen, I've got a big problem. You see, my paycheck was garnished last week, and I'm only getting half the normal amount. To make matters worse, the IRS froze my bank account. Listen, I'm embarrassed and scared. I need some help. Listen, Paul, you don't need to feel embarrassed. You just need some tax help. And the great news is the IRS has some unbelievable programs that can eliminate your tax debt so you don't have to worry about having your paycheck garnished or your bank levied. Doesn't that sound great? It sure does, Ronnie. Then do yourself a huge favor and get a free consultation right now and tell them the tax lady sent you. If you owe the IRS $10,000 or more, call now. 855-715-5723. 855-715-5723. That's 855-715-5723. Welcome back to Let's Talk Cars Radio, your automotive specialist. Call into the program now at 757-222-3705. Now, here is Dave Palach. Welcome back, America. You're listening to Let's Talk Cars Radio. I'm your host, Dave Pilatch. And before we went to commercial break, we were actually covering some of the things and the technology that changed in cars. And I was telling you guys about, I was excited about the fact that you actually, the tire technology that's changing. But one of the other big things that's actually changing is the light technology. So if you guys remember last year, there was a study done that showed the only thing that hadn't really changed in technology of car is lights. And the fact that lights actually didn't light up anything. Remember that? Yeah. They did all this study and found out the headlights on cars really don't light the road. I mean, they're they're poorly designed. It's a really horrible design. Nothing, I mean, it's just a technology. We just keep on throwing the same lights in cars and never really did anything. They weren't aimed correctly, even though you pay to have your headlights aimed. They're really not aimed at anything. They're you know you're aiming at a wall, but they're not really illuminating anything. So now the big push is is headlight technology. They have headlights that actually move and swoop with the road. They actually have headlights that will illuminate around corners now. So that was the big huge push at some of the shows this year that came out that I'm actually kind of excited. I mean. I never thought about it. I even told you back then that I never thought about it. When it actually came out that I never really went, oh, wow, this is one of those things where, you know, I never gave any thought to. I just turn on the headlights and you go on down the road. I never really thought about the fact of, wow, that, that these you could change a complete design and make this so much better. Now I know everybody's like, oh, well, they've been changing light bulbs and they got LEDs and halogens and all, all over the years they've been changing everything. But it, it never changed the design. It didn't change the way that we actually project the light bulb. It just changed the brightness of the light bulb, really. That was hmm. all they really did with it. Well, what else can you do other than make changes to the reflector? Well, they're actually now trying with, like, crystals and stuff like that where they can set it up 
and directionalize the light. I guess that'd be the way to say it. I don't know if that's the way to say it or not, but that's what I'm going to call it for now. But with setting up different crystals inside the headlight, they can actually aim the headlight and tweak it. So when you drive and as you go around winding roads, the light actually is projected on the road, no matter as you're turning or not, even without even having a mechanical device to turn the headlight, would just change in the way they set up all the, what they call the crystals, which are like the reflecting glass inside of it, that they can actually, as you go around a corner, the light will project itself in different angles to see clearly as you go around obstacles. So that would be neat. It's neat. It's, it's cool technology. I, I think one of the Audi was one of the biggest ones last year that was pushing towards changing some things. So I think now you're seeing a lot of other people are actually looking into it. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, a headlight's a headlight. Well, it really isn't because I can actually show you a bunch of video that came from last year that showed that headlights just don't work. And when you actually start really putting some technology and trying to aim them and directionalize them, that it changed the way that you see the road. I mean, like, instead of seeing, what, 20 feet in front of you, now you can see like 100 feet in front of you, clear as can be, just by changing simple things in the design of a headlight. Just build night vision into the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Okay, we, well, we already talked, you already know some of that exists. They already have, yeah, there's, there's technology already exists for that. So where you can actually start to see where the window has a computer screen across the front windshield and it starts to like digitalize things, do the little boxes, almost like your iPhone works when it's trying to take a picture, mm -hmm. and it'll start showing you objects further out as you start to drive. Yeah. But people say that they may be too distracting to drive with that. I don't think so. There's a deer down there. Right. <laughs> it makes a little little light box around to let you know that, you know, yeah. 100 yards out, there's a deer standing in the I field. I think though. that would be useful. It would be. I mean... You know me. I, I, I like all kinds of cool stuff, man. I just do. I can't get away from it all. Some of the stuff is just uh, unbelievable technology. Now, here's a story that's in the news this week about technology. One of your favorite people, Tesla. Uh -huh. uh, did you see Wozniak from uh, Apple actually spoke up about Tesla? Now, he drives one. He has yeah. one. And he's drove it. And he's always talked. He's praised the car. Likes the car. He's talked good about the car. But he got put into a conversation. And he basically said he's over. he's over it. He says because, you know, Elon Musk's explanation of everything is, well, it's beta. I'm not responsible. It's beta. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that's kind of the, the computer term of things and how everything's set up. So anytime anything fails, we're not responsible because it's beta. Yeah. Beta means it's experimental. Correct. Okay. So that's just their way we out of it. We haven't got the final thing yet. This right. is Correct. temporary. And his, his thing about it was you can't keep on blaming it on beta. If you are going to be the threshold of the guy who's inventing everything and you, everybody's looking to you for this new technology to, to emerge, every time something goes wrong, you just can't back away and go, well, that was beta. Well, you can get by with that initially, but you can't continue to Pe live on People that. are at that point now. Yeah. They're at the point where you, this is your technology. You're taking ownership of it, so take ownership when it messes up too. Yeah, I don't want to buy one until it's finalized. Correct. <laughs> so, and here's, so here's the bonus part of that. He also said that he believes Tesla is no longer ahead of the game. He believes Chevy and the other manufacturers are so more, for more, more far advanced than Tesla is. Hmm. I haven't seen in their technology you? because they haven't released it yet. We're, everybody's letting Tesla be the the guinea pig. We know this. We've okay. explained this. They take all the heat. Why the other manufacturers have been developing and not really opening up the door and keep on talking about it? They're not. They're not like every every time you know. Hey, I cracked a peanut. Look at me. They're not doing that, and Tesla tends to kind of do that. Okay, yeah. and, and I like Tesla. Don't get me wrong. I've, you've heard me talk good about him, but I agree with his analysis. Every time they have something, it's over the top. It's going to be the next biggest thing, and then either it, it, it goes forward or it fails. And when it fails, we back away and go, "Well, we're just in the testing phase." When the other manufacturers are developing things and not really talking about it, it might be in the testing phase, but you're paying full price for it. You're right. So the other manufacturers, I think, have learned from the mistakes. And I'm not saying they're, they're huge mistakes, but they are mistakes from Tesla as far as we're going to keep everything close to our chest until we know we have a grip on it versus every time, you know, the wind blows our way, we're not going to go ahead and go, oh, look at me. You know what I mean? And that's the difference between the two. So he has basically said that he believes that they are far more advanced than Tesla. They're just not ready to... They haven't showed their hand right, yet. They haven't showed their hand yet. Yeah. So that was interesting because that's a big name. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people in the computer world, a lot of, you know, the term computer nerds or hackers and all that kind of stuff, they, they listen to what this guy's got to say because he's usually right on. He yeah. didn't, you know, he didn't get to where he is by being, you know, a dummy. Indeed. And he doesn't speak a lot out in public either. So when yeah. he does, you might want to listen. Watch the a smart guy. No, he is. And I know you follow that more than yes, I do. Right. I know you do. So I thought you would appreciate that because it yeah. was interesting. Because like, like I said, you know he doesn't speak very much. Mm -hmm. But when he does, you, you might want to listen to what he has to say. And, and that's so, exactly correct. So 
here's the <laughs> Uh, here's another thing on Tesla. This is even crazier. It's kind of, so Tesla actually got sanctioned in the motorsports for their racing cars. So they are going to have a racing series with Teslas only. Hmm. And it got sanctioned that, this week. That'll be a quiet race, won't it? That, and see, that is what I said. I mean, you're, what are you going to sit in the stands and go, every time they go by? You're going to have to make the noise for them. I mean, because the car's just going to go by quietly. Yeah, the the... Tires on the pavement will be the only thing. That's going to be the noise. most boringest race ever. I don't think I could watch that race. There's no noise to it. Just, just the stickiness of the tires. I'd like by. to experience it once. I don't know that I'd want to make a habit of it, but I'd like to see Can what I, it was like. Do I get to experience it for free? I don't have to pay any money to go see this well, race. You shouldn't have to. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm not. No, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say because I think it's stupid. <laughs> if there's no purse, why pay? Okay. I'm going to move on. <laughs> I still think it's silly. We talked about airbags more than anybody ever cares to talk about airbags. You would agree upon that, right? Mm, I would. Huh? Well, let's talk about airbags. <laughs> <laughs> they must have done something else. How about 645,000 Prius being recalled because they won't inflate? Hmm. Even in an accident, they won't pop out? They're having a problem with inflation. I guess it's during accidents. Hmm. They're not inflating. Same company making them? Now, here's the question. <laughs> I, I didn't get a name because it wasn't in the media release. But now I'm going to ask the same question I asked when we talked about airbags and the problems with them before. Who else has this airbag in their car? You're exactly right. We don't know, do we? Well, we're going to find out. I yeah. guarantee, same thing. And everybody's like, and everybody turned a blind eye to it before. And nobody really wanted to talk about it. But now here we are again. Now you have one that won't inflate. Before you had one that blew up and tried to kill people. Now you have one that won't inflate. I, because of the fact that manufacturers share parts, and they don't usually make their own airbags. They get them from somebody else. Who other auto manufacturers get them from somebody else. I have a good feeling you're going to find this airbag in other cars. It's a matter of time before that name comes out. Well, did we learn our lesson the first time? No. Because everybody stayed quiet last time and it burned every one, last one of them. Yeah. Because they didn't want to admit that, yeah, we have that airbag in our cars too until they start, people start pointing fingers. So it'd be interesting to see how this one goes. I don't know. <laughs> I, thought you, I, I knew you were going to laugh about it because it's just one of those I'll things. I'll bet it's the same manufacturer. I can't remember the name of them, but I should. They've been in the news so much. Takata. Yeah. I'll bet yeah. it's them. I bet it's one of theirs. Yeah, it is. So keep your, keep your ears open. I'll, I'll keep, <laughs> I'm just curious to see how this one goes out. On the autonomous self-driving cars, self-driving trucks, self-driving delivery vehicles, and that's what this one is, news, there's actually a self-driving food market that actually was tested this week. So you order your food, and it's a driving grocery store, essentially, and it comes to your house and delivers your groceries. Now everybody's like, well, how do you, how do you keep from people stealing your groceries? Well, it's actually kind of cool. It's on a phone app. When you walk out to the truck to get your groceries, it recognizes your phone's in your hand, and it unlocks a locker, which lets you take your groceries out. You know I like that. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to utilize it. Bring me my food. No, because you're that person that you like that thing. Do you, do you use Uber Eats or anything like that? No, never have. No Uber Eats? Mm -mm. You just not your thing? I've you, never heard of it, to be okay. honest with you. Uber Eats it brings you food right to, right to your house. I didn't know Uber wherever. offered that. Yep, you just go ahead and you tell them when they go pick up the food from you from wherever you want, and they bring it to you. Okay, so that's a cool, cool like, little thing. Yeah, that's, that's appealing. Would you trust them to pick up your kids and take them wherever you wanted to go? <sighs> now, if you remember, we talked about this two years ago. We laughed about this yeah. two years ago. This was a concept. It now exists. So now they now have a Uber service they'll actually move your kids around i think it's a neat concept but how do you, if they're human beings involved how do you trust them that's my problem so what this is designed for people we, we literally joked about this two years ago because uh, we thought it was a silly concept so it actually has been in the test mode it's been tested in a city uh, for almost a year now and for five-year-olds to 18-year-olds it'll pick up your kids take them to school bring them home from school take them to after school practices and everything else like that so what's the parent doing while they're running them all around Take it that was what we, that's what we joked about before. We joked about this before. It was two years ago. I remember we joked about this concept. It was a small little media release about this. And we were like, I don't see it. And I remember even Chris was like, I would never let that ever happen. Well, yeah. here we are. They've tested it for a year. It's been successful. And they want to now start taking it to more cities. I, th I still think your kids are the parents' responsibility. The name of the, the, name of the program is called Shepherd. <laughs> Uber Shepherd. You know, okay. like shepherding the sheep. So. Well, we'll see what happens with that. I don't know. Well, that's, that's really all I got for you guys. It's been an interesting show, trying to work the board for, 
first time in a long time so hopefully i didn't mess it up too bad hopefully your camera will be back next week and we'll be right back on track i hope you guys enjoy the show enjoy your saturday it is actually kind of nice out there even though the temperatures are down a little bit go to a car show hey sunday's right around the corner remember turn off your tv spend some time with your kids they'll love you for it we're out of here and we'll talk to you soon